Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Dark colored boa constrictors have become increasingly popular among collectors over the last few years. And looking at these dark colored beauties, it's not hard to understand why. Today I want to share with you the different types of locality and morph boa that have the darkest coloration. I'm even going to discuss what's probably the darkest boa that you can get, so be sure to stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. I've got lots of great content in the works, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn all about these amazing animals. When it comes to dark locality boas, there's really three main localities that have this beautiful dark phenotype. And I'm really lucky to have world-class examples of each of them in my breeding collection. And the first, of course, is the Argentine boa, Boa constrictor natalis. These animals come from the extreme southern end of the range of the boa constrictor in the wild in northern Argentina as well as western Paraguay and southern Bolivia. And as you can see they have this beautiful dark phenotype. So the animals typically have this very dark chocolatey brown to black color. They have a lot of the lighter brown caramel highlights and even like these little white and yellowish white flecks. So depending on the particular bloodline the Argentine boas can have a different appearance. I've seen some that are almost a pure black in color, or really a very, very dark brown with very few white or yellow markings. And there are bloodlines which have been bred for this really dark appearance. There are other bloodlines which have been bred to have a lot of white flecking in them. And then there's even a bloodline called the Max Pink bloodline, which has been selectively bred to retain pink coloration normally only seen in the neonates into adulthood. So there's a lot of different selectively bred Argentine boas depending on the look that you're interested in. Um, most of the typical ones have an appearance kind of like this. When they start out as babies, they're not as dark, but as they grow, they get kind of darker in color, and they also lose a lot of their saddle pattern. So the saddles become very irregular. You can see they have kind of more of this um, net-like pattern. If you look at the sides, they kind of have a semi-circular pattern going down the sides. Uh, they have a higher saddle count than most of the other types of boa constrictors. So overall, this leads to their you know, beautiful, different appearance. They definitely don't look like your typical boa constrictor. And as I mentioned, in the darkest examples, most of the white and yellow markings will be gone. And you just have this overall really dark, almost black looking snake. If you look at the climate in the range of the Argentine boas in the wild, this is a temperate climate. It's a lot colder than most of the other climates for boa constrictors. In fact, in some areas, there's even snow on the ground in the winter. So it's thought these animals have evolved this dark color because it absorbs more heat and it's more suited for a colder climate. Argentine boas have become extremely popular in the last few years and the price has shot up dramatically. Although all of the countries that have these in the wild are now completely closed to export of these beautiful animals, luckily there are quite a few in captivity to ensure that there is a supply of captive bred animals for the uh, boa collectors for the future to come. And I don't have any pairs this year, but I'm hoping next year to produce some more of these beautiful dark Argentine boas. Our next dark locality boa takes us to the extreme northern end of the natural range of boa constrictors. And this is the Tar Humara mountain boa from northern Mexico. And it's quite interesting that boas both from the extreme southern and extreme northern end of the range have these dark colors. But again, it's probably due to the more temperate climates and cooler winters in the areas in which they inhabit. And so these beauties are sometimes known as mini Argentine boas because as the Argentine boas can get to be up to seven to 10 feet, these little tar humara boas stay in the three and a half to four and a half foot range. So they're the perfect compact boa for someone that's short on space. And as you can see, they have these beautiful dark colors with this dark brown saddles on a caramel or mocha background. And these animals also get darker with age this is a three-year-old male um, who's probably not going to get too much bigger than this. He's about three feet long at this point. Um, so a lot of people overlook them because they think that they're just dark and they're not very 
colorful, but they have a lot of pink and even green and blue highlights to their scale. So really beautiful looking animals. And then like the Argentine boas, they have a high saddle count and kind of a broken up saddle pattern. So real neat that they look kind of like a mini Argentine boa. Unfortunately, I've seen quite a few animals offered on the online classified reptile sites as tarhumar boas, which clearly were not. So make sure that you can trust your breeder or seller that you're getting the real thing. The real tarhumar boas have a specific head pattern, the high saddle count, and a distinctive look. So if you're in doubt, make sure you ask somebody that knows about what a tarhumar boa looks like before you make the purchase. The third type of dark locality boa is boa constrictor or boa imperator longicata, which is known as the long tail boa or the tombs boa. And so these animals represent a kind of a mid-sized dark boa. We saw the large sized dark argentine and the mini sized dark tar humaras. These long tail boas get to be in the five to seven foot range. So they're kind of a mid-sized solution of a dark locality boa. And so these animals have a very unique developmental change. They start out relatively light, but with each shed, they get a little bit darker until once they reach adulthood, they have this beautiful dark coloration. You can see this animal who is now about four and a half years old, has these beautiful dark saddles, almost black, and she's got this beautiful yellowish, mocha-ish background pattern, lots of speckles on the uh, belly scales, and then this beautiful dark eye or dark head markings. The best examples of Longicata have these gorgeous, really velvety dark head markings, and they're just exquisite to look at. This female I'm particularly pleased with. She's developed really nicely. Um, she's uh, hopefully going to be ready to breed next year, although I'll just have to see how my Longicata pairings do this year before deciding if I want to breed her or not. These animals are also known as a long tail boa because they have the longest tail of any locality boa. And so these animals are found in a very inaccessible region of northern Peru right on the border with Ecuador. Um, they're relatively new to science. They were described about three decades or so ago. And there's actually an anorthristic form which lacks the yellow and red pigments and it has just pure black, white, and gray. And these animals are very striking and they almost look like a black and white photograph. So when you're looking for a longicata boa, bear in mind that the babies look quite a bit different than the adults. So you can't judge what your baby is going to look at look like as an adult from how it looks as a baby. So be sure to ask to see pictures of the parents so you have some idea of what your baby will develop into. In fact, this animal really didn't look a lot like this when she was a baby. She just got much darker over time and I'm just really pleased with how she has developed. Now I want to talk about a boa morph that gives rise to combos with the darkest colors. And that, of course, is the IMG gene. And the IMG gene is the increasing melanin gene. IMG boas start off relatively light and they build up dark pigment with each shed. It's almost like a morph version of what happens with a longicata boa. So this particular animal has kind of a nasty disposition. You know, she's not over her baby aggression yet, and she's also in shed, so it's kind of the holy trifecta right there. Um, anyway, this is actually a hypo IMG. But what's cool about the IMG gene is that it combines extremely well with a lot of different morph genes. And you get a dark boa, but depending on what other gene you combine it with, you get lots of cool phenotypes. This gene was uh, established by Peter Call. It's really gotten popular lately, and it's not hard to see why, since it combines so well. And another advantage of the IMG gene is that it's an incomplete dominant, or even, maybe even a dominant gene. So you only need one copy in the animal to have the phenotype. And if you have just one IMG boa, you can breed it with any of your boas to spread that gene through your collection. Um, you don't need to pair up two, as is the case with a recessive gene like albino or anorthristic. So as I mentioned, it combines very well with a lot of other genes. This particular one is a hypo IMG. And so the hypo tends to make it a little bit lighter. Um, and, but you can see the animal has this really crazy wild look to it. 
a lot of background markings and freckles and speckles. Just a really cool look. So this one is still actively getting darker. She's only about a year old. And after she sheds in a few days, she'll probably be even darker. And so I don't expect this animal to be completely dark black when she's an adult because of the hypo, but she'll be quite a bit darker than you see right here. I have one more beautiful IMG boa in my collection, and this animal is actually an IMG hypo jungle. So it's like the animal I just showed you, but it also has the jungle gene as well. And as you can see, the light areas of this animal are considerably lighter because of the jungle gene. But you can see this animal has quite extreme contrast between her dark areas and her light areas. And they produce these beautiful facial markings. This animal has one of the most beautiful faces of any of my boas. These beautiful golden eyes, this light tannish golden head color with these really dark head stripes and cheek markings, similar almost to my Longicata boas. And so this particular animal has a 66% chance of being het for the VPI T positive albino. So my plan is to pair her with my VPI T positive albino male, and with any luck, I should be able to produce VPI T positive IMG sunglows and junglows. So fingers crossed, and I hope I didn't mess up the genetics in my head for this video. But this particular animal is about the same age as the one I just showed you. She's only a little over a year. So she's got a ways to go before she's ready to breed. But some cool projects I have in store in the years ahead with these morph boas. And so I mentioned that the other genes you combine IMG with are really important in de determining the appearance of the animal. Although in general, IMG causes a darker appearance, these other genes can really have an effect on exactly how dark the animal is. And if you want the most dark boas possible, the genes to combine IMG with are the motley gene and the anery gene. And in fact, there's one particular type of anery gene that's known as the RDRBEA, or Ralph Davis Reptiles Black-Eyed Anery. And so this is a form of anery that was uh, started by the breeder Ralph Davis from an animal that was uh, sourced out of Nicaragua. And it's a pr particularly dark form of anery. And so it should be noted that this form of anery is not genetically co compatible with the other types of anery. So you wouldn't want to breed it to a, a type one or type two anery. You might be sure to breed it to another RDR black-eyed anery. And so when you combine the IMG gene and the RDR black-eyed anery gene, you get a boa that's known as a black devil boa. And these boas are super dark. They're really impressive looking. I haven't seen one in person, but they look really gorgeous in the pictures. Some of them are almost pure black, but the uh, color, it's this really glossy, deep jet black. It has almost a velvety look to it. It's really quite striking. I've seen others that have a little bit of white, particularly around the tail. And I think it's the genetic background of all the other genes that you have the uh, RDR, black-eyed anery, and the IMG gene on top of. Because remember, boas have tens of thousands of genes. We're just fiddling around with a few to make these morphs. The black devil boas haven't been available for very long, and they're quite hard to come by. And the ones I've seen up for sale sell out really fast. And it, no surprise that they command very high prices. But hopefully more of these will be available over the next few years and more people can get them. But if you want a really dark boa that's basically solid black in color, you should look for a black devil boa. That being said, the IMG gene, as I mentioned, is really cool and you can use it to enhance the dark colors of pretty much any other project that you're working with. It's just one of the best genes to combine with other genes and combo morphs. So that was a little bit about dark boas. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to reach out to me with any questions you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.